You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. So on a Tuesday, LSU lost a commitment from wide receiver Joseph Stone. And we talked a little bit about that, and I think you could probably read between the lines on some of that stuff. And my feeling generally with commitments, just to sort of um, uh, reset the deck, is I, I understand generally how the, the fan perspective is. If you lose a commitment, well, like if someone commits to your school, well, he's going to go to the Hall of Fame. If someone picks another school, well, he's overrated. If you have a commitment and he flips to another school, well, you didn't want him. You purged him out of the class. Um, I think there are, um, sometimes when all those cases are true, when we talked about about uh, Stone, the wide receiver yesterday, I, I, there was you basically got your answer later in the evening on Tuesday when four-star wide receiver Draylon Miller decommitted from Texas A&M. Draylon Miller was on LSU's campus for Saturday's game against Auburn. So you have a top 100 overall prospect in the country who's committed to one of your rivals. He's at your game against Auburn. Uh, on Monday, one of your longtime wide receiver commits decommits and that from you. And then a couple hours later, the five-star receiver who's committed to one of your rivals decommits from your rival. You can kind of piece things together a little bit there, right? It makes a lot of sense. Uh, this one is one that... Um, this one's one that's a little... I, I would say is a little more disappointing, obviously. Uh, Andre Evans is someone that LSU worked very hard to recruit. Uh, they got him committed out of Tennessee, out of Nashville. He's a four-star. And not only did he decommit, but he flipped to Georgia. You see, if Andre Evans had decommitted to LSU and flipped to Louisiana Tech, you can kind of see what was happening. He got purged. And when he flips to Georgia you kind of can read the writing on the wall. Georgia never gave up on recruiting him, and they made their pitch, and he decided to go play for the number one team in the country. You can hardly fault the kid. That sort of happens. But my feeling remains the same. Regardless if you get a commitment, if you lose a commitment, if it's a, a five-star guy or a three-star guy, whatever it may be, I look more so in context of how does that position group as a whole look outside of one player? Yes, of course, you'd love to get all the five stars and the blue chippers and everything, but sometimes five stars and blue chippers don't pan out. I mean, Marcel Brooks was a five star that LSU brought in here in 2019. He went to TCU and changed positions like three times. And then there's guys that are, I, I, say, Ryan was a five star, still feeling his way through right now in year three. And then there's guys who are Patrick Peterson and they and Derek Stingley and their five starters. They're amazing from the second they step foot on campus. It, recruiting is inexact. Really what I look for is that position group as a whole. And so one thing, you know, with this LSU cornerback room that's undeniable is you have to have a dramatic upgrade in 2024. Now, I, you don't need the, the full history of the position, but I think we all remember what happened. Ed Ogeron gets fired. You have this massive exodus. Um, you you had really good numbers at that position. And then, of course, Eli Ricks transfers. Dwight McLaughlin transfers. Ray Darius Jones transfers. Demarius McGee transfers. So basically, all the work you've done recruiting at that position, all those guys leave except for LaTerrence Welch. So you go heavy in the portal. You hit on some guys last year, but they were all one-year guys. You go heavy in the portal again, and you miss on the really the, the four guys that you recruited this year. I, I shouldn't say miss on all four, but clearly you missed on Deuce Chestnut. Zy Alexander is your best cornerback, but he doesn't look like guys that you would normally have starting at LSU. J.K. Johnson's injured, and Denver Harris is a certainly a work in progress. So I think when you look at what the cornerback room for 2024 will look like now without, without Andre Evans, think of it like this. I think it's safe to say Deuce Chestnut's not going to be back. Right, uh, He hasn't been with LSU the past two weeks. Brian Kelly's been a little evasive on his, his future, but I think we can you can read the writing on the wall with Deuce Chestnut. He was a two-year starter at Syracuse. He transfers to LSU to have the opportunity to step up in competition. He's out there week one against Florida State. He gets mossed, and we don't see him again. Like He's literally not even traveling, so he's not with the team. So if Chestnut's not back, 
that means you got three other guys. You know, J.K. Johnson will be healthy. We've yet to see what he might be. There's some optimism there. Denver Harris, certainly we assume, will be back next year. And hopefully you're older, you're better, you're wiser. And then Zai Alexander has the option to come back again should, should he choose to. So you could have those three guys returning. You've got some young scholarship players. LaTerrence Welch, Ashton Stamps, and Jeremiah Hughes. That puts you at six cornerbacks right there. Three veterans, three young guys who are on scholarship who are still coming along. And then you've got the current commits in this class. And that's where maybe there's reason for real optimism because the current commits in this class look more like what you would expect LSU cornerback commits to look like. A Juwan Johnson's a four-star from Lafayette. Wallace Foster's a three-star from Warren Easton in New Orleans. And you've got Kai Bates, who's a high four-star out of the state of Florida. You have three blue-chip cornerbacks committed, and you're not done. They're still recruiting Bernard Causey, who's a kid out of New Orleans who's currently committed to Ole Miss. LSU's given him the offer, and, and most of the industry people assume he's going to flip to LSU as well. So you're, you're going to get more at that position as well. And one thing worth – don't just take my word for it. Remember, Shea Dixon was with us – you know, a couple of weeks back when we were talking about, about recruiting, and he talked about this LSU defensive back class. Now, keep in mind, at the time, the class included Andre Evans, but Shea was talking not just about corners, but also safeties, where, you know, Deshaun McBride, out of Denham, the safety, is the highest-rated commit in your class right now. Here's what Shea had to say a few weeks ago about this LSU secondary class that's currently committed. I would put them up there with most of the teams in the country in terms of quality that they're taking. I mean, you've got a guy in Jawan Johnson who right now is still on pace and in a battle to break Brock Berlin's record for all-purpose yards in a high, as a high schooler, and he's going to play corner for LSU. I think he can make that transition. They went to Florida, got Ty Bates, who a lot of teams wanted. He'll finish as one of the top 10 corners in the country. And they've got Andre Evans, who I think is a really big upside play for them, in addition to Wallace Foster with Evans coming out of the Nashville area. And then it's safe. Deshaun McBride is a top five safety in the country. Uh, Joel Rogers is one of the top 300 players in the country in the top 20 safety. So this DB class, both rankings-wise and just how they're performing and upside and kind of the tools they have, athleticism, it's all there. So I'm nowhere near saying this is DBU again, but these are the type of recruiting classes you need to have to inch back towards that. That's a great feeling. that You're, you're, only, you're not going to get back to that through the portal. You'll get back to that by having these types of recruiting classes and supplementing with the portal. And what's to say LSU won't do that again with with the transfer portal if there's a player worth snagging that can make you immediately better, like Jark Bernard Converse did a year ago or Makai Garner did a year ago. Uh, for what it's worth, I mean, look, this, this LSU pass defense, it's tough to look at. I mean, you're 114th in the country right now. You allow 266 pass yards a game. Uh, LSU. 114th in the country in pass defense. It's not the expectation people have here. It's a it's disappointing that Andre Evans has flipped, but LSU's not done uh, certainly at that position. By the way, for what it's worth, you know my whole theory about you don't have to be great, you know, in, in pass defense to go to the playoff and win a championship. Um, you got to be if you're a lead on offense, you got to be good enough on defense. Do we all sort of assume that Washington's a pretty good team, right? Washington, the Huskies, Michael Penix, front runner for the Heisman, all that stuff. You know where Washington is right now in pa in pass defense in the country? Any idea where they're ranked? Muse, any idea where Washington's ranked in pass defense? In the 60s? Nope. Paula, you want to take a stab at it? I'll go 75. Uh, how about 107th? Oh. Washington. A hundred and can they can Washington go to the playoff? Uh, absolutely, a yeah. hundred and seventh in pass defense, seven spots ahead of your Fighting Tigers of LSU. You ain't got to be great. You got to be able to score a lot of points and be good enough to get stops. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.